the most difficult thing about a permanent note is there is no style guide. There is no template for it. Like you saw with the literature notes, there are some kind of prescribed ways to go about the literature notes. Uh, permanent, permanent notes don't have that. They go by different names. There's Slipbox notes, there's Zettles, there's Evergreen notes. All of these are different attempts to kind of create a structure around the permanent note. What you want to keep in mind when you're writing permanent notes is that they should be the result of your own thinking and how you do that is to go through the process of elaboration. Elaboration means to expand on and connect an idea. Uh, as a result, you know, new relationships will form uh, between existing ideas and the new idea that you had. But to do that, you need to abstract out the idea from the material so that it no longer needs its supporting context uh, in the literature that you consume from. So abstraction is a process from taking an idea from its original text and making it usable in a more general sense. Uh, and that's how the kind of the phrase atomic comes into the picture. You'll, if you've researched smart notes at all and the Zettelkasten method, you'll, you'll hear that atomic phrase come up. And that means that it is... Um, it's permanently understood. That's the best way that I can, I can describe it, where you take what you've learned, you rewrite it in your own words, and you write it for someone else. You write it that it can be understood by someone else independent of its supporting arguments or its connected ideas. And it's that atomicness, uh, that atomic property of the note that makes it malleable enough that you can connect it to other other ideas that you can form discussions, you can defo you can uh, form arguments, or even a narrative that supports a particular idea using these atomic ideas that you capture in the permanent notes. Uh, so now let's go ahead and walk through what that looks like to take those literature notes that I had previously just showed you and to turn them into a permanent note that ultimately led to the creation of this course. And typically how I create my permanent notes is I let a backlog of literature notes come up Lumen himself would wait till the end of a book uh, until he had taken all of his literature notes to process them into permanent notes. And I follow a very much it's a very similar approach. And the reason is you have a way better idea of everything in that book and how to organize the knowledge after you've taken it instead of trying to constantly just pull new information in as you see fit. So fully consuming a piece of literature uh, and then translating it and, and batching it essentially in these different phases where you're reading and taking notes, literature notes, then you're batching the, the process of taking the, you know, translating the literature notes into permanent notes. And then the next step, which we'll talk about in the next video is adding them into the knowledge base or your slip box. So we'll just assume, you know, that I've got all the literature notes that I had, that I'm happy with and I had to take smart notes. And these three are the literature notes that we had uh, just took in the last video. So what I typically do here is as I go through, I'll highlight. So in obsidian, there's this double equal sign that you can use around text that will highlight it and so if you do the preview you will see that it stays there and it just puts a nice yellow highlight over it when there gets to be a lot of them in here um, it gets kind of difficult to focus on which one that you're looking at and so i use that as a tactic to help so what i then do is i click um, i create a new permanent note we already had a placeholder one in here that i will just open in a new panel again if you wanted to create a new one uh, with a different timestamp, you just create uh, click the create new that'll cast a note so then it's at this point where I think about this literature note and I think about in the context of the book that I read and how would I abstract this out into an atomic idea by kind of elaborating on it so it could connect to other ideas. Um, now this is pretty, you know, specific to, to smart notes and writing notes uh, because it, it is pertaining to that particular topic. Um, and so if I were to think about this, so in uh, thinking about this literature note, I would say that writing is a process of abstracting ideas from its original context. Uh, and by abstracting an idea, you make it usable in a general sense and instead of a uh, specific sense. And then typically what I'll do at the end is I will put a link to the notes and then I'll add actually a page number in there. This is just something for me so I don't have to go ping pong back and through between literature notes and permanent notes. Uh, and it makes a cool little graph as you start like, oh, here's all the notes that, I, that uh, kind of made up all this. The other thing you could do in your literature note, instead of highlighting it, is you could link it in here. And this would do the same thing as what this is. Um, it just would be visible on the literature note versus in the permanent note. So if you did this and you did a pipe, uh, this creates an alias for it. And then we can search for 842. Uh, and then we can link it. So if you click on that, 
it's going to open up the permanent note. So that's two ways to do the same thing. It's either linking it directly or what this is called as a backlink. So now how to take smart notes. Literature note is a backlink to this. So whichever one you want to do. So I'll go ahead and turn the other two literature notes into permanent notes, and then we'll walk through adding them to the slip box. So there we have it, we have three new permanent slipbox notes. I added a new literature note that I had borrowed from the book that I wrote that I actually turned into a permanent note. Turns out that I never expanded on this use usage of the slipbox trains effective thinking uh, into a permanent note inside of my uh, Zettelkasten Obsidian Vault. So I decided to add another literature note. And that's the key point is like not every single literature note that you put down or fleeting note that you put down should turn into a permanent note because it does take some time. So with that, uh, we'll come to the conclusion here with writing the three different types of notes, and we'll move now into adding them into the slip box and actually building that lattice work uh, that is your knowledge base in Obsidian.